Dieu. Merci beaucoup. Praise the Lord. Gloire à Dieu. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. Tonight, you are liberated. Tonight, you are delivered. And tonight, the power of God coming from the throne of God will reach every life in Jesus' name. You say, deliberate. Who said, deliberate, deliberate. Liberate you today. Set free today. The power of God is coming from heaven. It's coming to every life. It's going to touch every life. And today, from this moment, you'll never be the same in Jesus' name. We have been talking about the Prince of Peace. And the Prince of Peace has a kingdom. And in that kingdom, everything you need for life, everything you need anytime, anywhere, that kingdom provides everything. Because the prince and the king that reigns in that kingdom is the one that is able to do everything, anytime, for everyone. And tonight, I'm going to be a mouthpiece of that prince, of that king. And he's inviting you to the kingdom. And when you respond to that invitation, liberation, salvation, deliverance, redemption, and every provision you need for your life, we're ready now. Are you ready? Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because you have thought of us. You have planned for us. You have provided for us. You know when we'll be here on earth. And you have made every provision that will satisfy and fulfill all the desires we'll have. We're asking tonight that you open the windows and the doors of heaven and you shower your blessing of every kind upon every participant in Jesus' name. Here at the Alpha location, there online everywhere, your power will sweep every evil thing away from our lives in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life tonight. Show yourself strong in every life tonight. Fulfill the good desires of every life tonight. Bless everyone and make everyone a channel of blessing to other people. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty, marvelous name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I welcome you to the marvels of the kingdom of God. Tonight we're looking at Romans chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It says, the kingdom of God is not for food, eating, and drinking. It says, but the kingdom of God 
is for righteousness. The kingdom of God is for peace. And the kingdom of God is for joy in the Holy Ghost. And it is the king of the kingdom. The prince of the kingdom. That brings everything that we need because everything is provided in the kingdom. If you are outside the kingdom, you might come near the kingdom and have food and have meat and have dinner and have everything the kitchen can provide for you. You may even say grace on that food. That's not yet the kingdom. You might come near the kingdom, like you are here, the crusade, and you have some drink. We'll give you water, we'll give you beverage, whatever, king, whatever drink you have. You see, that satisfies my hunger, that satisfies my thirst. Yet, that is not really the kingdom. Because the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is righteousness. When you understand the righteousness of God, the character of God, the beauty of the life of God, and you desire that, you want him to be your father, you want the Lord to be your savior and the life he lived, the righteousness he had. You had a passionate desire for that. And then you turn away with, from everything in life that does not satisfy. The food that does not satisfy permanently. The drink that does not satisfy permanently. The celebration of eating and drinking that will not satisfy permanently. And all the physical things, all the fleshly things that people have that gives them some satisfaction. But it is not permanent and you desire what will be permanent and you want the righteousness of the kingdom then you return you turn you repent from your sin and come to the lord and now you have the righteousness that comes from the kingdom of god and that satisfies permanently And he said the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace. Peace in your heart. Peace in your life. Rest in your soul. And you want that. You see that religion does not provide peace of heart. And all the rituals of religion, they do not provide peace of heart permanently. But you want peace. As deep as the ocean. As wide as the, he at the sea. As high as unto heaven. The peace permanent. The peace perfect. The peace peculiar. And you want that within you. The peace that you have here on earth and gets you to heaven, the heaven of peace. And you so want that, you turn away from yourself, you turn away from the world, and you turn unto the Lord. And the righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. There is joy, some kind of joy in food. 
some kind of joy in drink. But you know, you can so have that joy in drink. I enjoy this drink. And then you become intoxicated and drunk. And all the joy you add, everything ends in the gutter. And you come to shame and degradation. But now you want the joy that is not stained with any shame, with any sorrow, and with any regret on earth. That you find only in the Lord. That you find only in the kingdom. And so you turn away from the mundane things of the world that will not give a permanent righteousness, a permanent peace, and a permanent joy. And now you turn to the Lord and he gives you salvation. And he gives you his partnership and his presence. Now you have the righteousness and the peace and the joy in the Holy Ghost. Actually, you have a recreation. It recreates your heart. It recreates your desires. It recreates your passion. And the things that will not satisfy. He takes your heart, it takes your mind away from them. You become a citizen of his kingdom. That's what you are talking about tonight. The recreated citizens of the kingdom of peace. He recreates us and he changes our nature. It changes us in the inner man. And it makes us to have the joy and the peace and the righteousness of his kingdom. He will do it for you tonight. He will retune, he will refocus your life in the direction of the kingdom that will bring righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The recreated citizens of the kingdom of peace. Three things we're looking at. Number one, redemption and recreation in the kingdom of the prince. He's the only one that can bring that transom, that purchase. He's the only one that can bring that redemption and recreation in our lives. And tonight is your night. Where are you? You'll do that recreation in your life tonight. You'll bring that redemption in your life tonight. Redemption and recreation in the kingdom of the priest. Number two, relief and recovery in his kingdom of power. Uh, the kingdom of the world in which we live. The earthly kingdom. The natural kingdom. The kingdom of a country and the kingdom of a tribe. The kingdom of a community. They cannot solve all our problems. The ones they solve are ordinary and they are small, minute, a little fraction of the problems we have. And we go here, he's supposed to be a specialist. And we bring our problems there to that earthly kingdom, to the kingdom of this world. They use their instruments and everything. They say, Madam, we cannot do this. 
This one is impossible. But the prince, our prince, he turns impossibility to possibility. And tonight is that night. He's waiting by your side there. He says, give me a chance. It will not preach your life. He didn't say amen. It will not preach everything in your life. And whatever is not supposed to be there, he'll take everything away. He gives us relief. He gives us recovery in the kingdom of power. Number three is righteousness without retaliation in the kingdom of peace. In the kingdom of this world, it looks like a visible, apparent, superficial righteousness. It is the righteousness of a man that's about to die. And he calls his son. He said, come on here. I'm going. I am dying. But there's still something I wanted to do I could not do. There is that man there. You know his name? He offended me. And I couldn't touch him. I wanted to be righteous to the people so that they will see he's a nice man, he's a good man, he's a righteous man. All those people offended him, he didn't even touch them. My son, you are wise. Look at him. What I wanted to do, I couldn't do. I wanted to reach at the age. I couldn't do it. I pass it to your hand. Use your wisdom and help me after I'm gone retaliate. That we're finding the we're finding the kingdom of the world. But now we come to the kingdom of peace. Peace with God. Peace through our praise. Peace perpetual. And then when we come to that kingdom, it gives us righteousness without retaliation in the kingdom of peace. Redemption. Recreation. Relief. Recovery. Righteousness. Your habit tonight. I said your habit tonight. Power in your life. Peace in your life. And every good thing, provision you are asking tonight, the Lord will give unto you. We're looking, we're looking at number one. Number one, redemption and recreation in the kingdom of the priests. Hey, look at uh, Psalm 130, Psalm 130, I'm reading from verse 7. I'm reading here from verse 7. Let Israel hope in the Lord. Israel, they had no peace in Egypt. Israel, they had no peace at the Red Sea, at the shore of the Red Sea. Egypt, they did not have peace after the Red Sea. Egypt, they did not have peace with the Assyrians. Egypt did not have peace in Babylon. Everywhere they went, it appears there is no peace. Permanent peace. They had meat, manna, they had water, drink out of the rock, but they were looking for peace. 
everywhere they went they were tossed here and there and then the word came from above don't give up hope let Israel hope in the Lord look at your life look at your family look at your surrounding you thought if I got this if I got that I'll have peace but you know there's no peace in the world but don't lose hope there is hope in the Lord and there is peace in the Lord and it's by saying for with the Lord there is mercy and with him there is plenteous redemption every yoke that oppressed you everything that pinned you down everything that made you to feel there's no forgiveness there's no freedom there's no peace there's no redemption hope in the lord tonight he'll bring total full redemption into your life in jesus name for with the lord there is mercy and with him there is plenteous redemption that word plenteous there is so full to the brim it's even overflowing the redemption it's so much so deep so wide so high it comes to you and it reaches every area of your life there is plenteous and full refreshing redemption And then he tells us in verse 8, it says, And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. They had been wandering. They came to his side. They were so thirsty, no water to drink. Eventually they got the water. The water was bitter. In their hearts, they began asking questions. Why? Wherefore? How is this happening to us? And something told them in their mind, in their heart. It's because of the iniquities and the sins you have committed. That's why, even though you came out of Egypt, this is still happening to you. He said, your life is not straight. Your life is not pleasing to God. A lot of in iniquities in your life. And the iniquities have brought infirmity into your life. And they were wondering then, if our iniquities continue with us after we left Egypt, what are we going to do now? If your iniquities abide with you, what are you going to do now? If you are suffering sickness and then you can recollect this is my fault, HIV does not jump on somebody in the street. You did something. Look at HIV now. What am I going to do now? Venereal disease is not in the air that as we are breathing, we automatically have venereal disease. No, it comes as a result of iniquity. What am I going to do now? And then hypertension has come. Hypertension does not knock at every door. You've done something. What have I done? What am I going to do now? Anger and violence brings internal sickness. Now I have this and the, my heart, my internal, everything is hot. 
It doesn't jump on somebody on the street. You've done something. Iniquity brought infirmity. Sin brought suffering. And all those sick, they bring sickness into life. And you can, you can treat the outside, but the real source of the problem, you cannot treat. What am I going to do now? Praise the Lord, your answer has come. Praise the Lord, the solution has now come. What's the solution? What's the, re what's the reward? He the prince of peace shall redeem Israel from all its iniquities. And when he redeems you from all iniquity, he will re relieve you from all the infirmity. The grace of the Lord will flow into your life tonight. The power of the Lord will work in your life tonight. And the Lord will redeem you. I said the Lord will redeem you. From all your iniquities. Now there are people that do not understand how God works. Now you see if you look at a tree. The tree has root. The tree has stem. The tree has branches. On the branches, you have other branches also shooting out. And then you have the fruit at the end of each of those branches shooting out. Life is like a tree like that. It has root. It has stem. It has branches. On the branches we have sicknesses. On the branches we have suffering. On the branches we have shame. On the branches we have the result of what the root is producing. The root is our sin. And as long as that's the, that root is in the soil, it will bring, bring him forth all those branches and all those fruits and all those sicknesses and diseases. And there are people that do not understand that the very source, the origin, the root of suffering in life, of sickness in life, is the sin at the root of our lives. And then somebody says, heal me, heal me. That's good. But we are not dealing with the root. And so one branch is cut off. The other branches are still there. I praise God, he has healed me. That one is gone. One branch is gone. As long as that root is there, that branch that was cut off will come back again. That's why when we come to the Lord, He takes away that root. And once the root, you dig around it, you pull it up, it's out of the ground. At the same time, the root and the stem and the branches and the sicknesses and the infirmities all are gone. You remember Jesus looked at that tree and he said, no man eat fruit of you anymore. By the time they passed the second day, the whole tree, branch, stem, everything dried up, 
from the roots. And because everything dried up from the roots, all the branches, they could not spring up again. That's what the Lord will do for you. I said, that's what the Lord will do for you. He'll not just superficially heal you. He will take the sin away. He'll take the root away. And automatically, all the branches of sickness and suffering and disease, everything will vanish away from your life. Look at number two here. Number two is the relief and the recovery in his kingdom of power. The kingdom of the prince is the kingdom of power. Power to save. Power to heal. Power to deliver. Power to liberate. Power to set you free permanently. He will do it in your life. He will do it in my life. Sicknesses will vanish away. All the oppression and demonization, everything will vanish away. The power that comes to your life is the power of the king and the power from his kingdom. You come into his kingdom. You live in that kingdom. You believe in the person and the prince and the prize of the king. And as you do that, then the power works in your life and everything Satan deposited in your life. When you are in Satan's kingdom, everything will be taken away. The devil, the thief, came to steal and to kill and to destroy. But the prince, our prince, said, I am come that she might have life and have that life more abundantly. Come to the kingdom. I assure you tonight, it will relieve you of every pain. I assure you tonight, you'll find recovery from the sickness and disease you'll be looking for in Jesus' name. Relief and recovery in his kingdom of power. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 23. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. I'm preaching the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. The message of the kingdom. The proclamation of the kingdom. And it is that message of the kingdom and the gospel of the kingdom that gives us the healing, the deliverance, and it sets us free. It is that good news of the kingdom, the proclamation of the kingdom that breaks every yoke in our lives. Look at the latter part of that verse, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Among our people here. Among our people over there online. 
Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same power, the same ability, the same love, the same compassion, the same possibilities as he had in days gone by. He went about all Galilee. Is here with us in Cameroon. Is there with them over the radio, over the television? Is there everywhere we are now? We are connected with Him through whatever means we're hearing the good news, the gospel of the kingdom. And remember, it's the same Jesus. Remember, his power has not changed. Remember, the possibilities in him have not changed. Remember, the healing virtue in him has not changed. Remember, there is no, impartial, there is no partiality in him. The perfect prince... Is the perpetual prince, is the prevailing prince, and is the one that comes to do what he had ever done. And we're told, healing all manner of sickness. Whatever the name, however long he has been there, healing all manner of sickness. Healing all manner of disease that takes your ease away. The sickness that takes your peace of mind away. The sickness that makes you to roll in pain. The sickness that makes you to go all about searching for solutions, searching for recovery, and searching for healing. The sickness that takes the rest and the, and the restoration of the peace from your brain. The sickness that attacks your bone. And there's no peace. You cannot lie down on that side. You cannot lie down on this side. You cannot lie down backward. You cannot lie down on your tummy. And you, what am I going to do now? That kind of sickness. All manner of disease. The sickness that makes you to withdraw from society. Mouth smelling. Body smelling. Every patch noticed by people. They're even trying to avoid you. And of course you are avoiding them too. All manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You are deranged. You are disturbed. You are shattered. You are distracted. You cannot concentrate on anything because of the pain and the perplexity of this disease. And the demons are laughing at you. And the neighbors are making fun of you. And your friends are giving up on you. And even your relatives, they have carried you here, carried you there, carried you everywhere. And there's no solution. Oh, they say, I have my family to take care of you, abandoned. But Christ is our prince. Christ is the prince of peace. He is the prince of power. Tonight, he has located you where you are. Look at that man on top of the tree. Peter did not locate him. John did not locate him. Help did not locate him. And Jesus was walking. When he got to where he was, 
he stood still. He looked up. He called him by name. He said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. The Lord located him. The Lord has located you. He knows about the sickness. He's done it for other people before. He says, I look at you. You are the next on line for a miracle. Yeah. All manner of sickness, all manner of disease, he can heal, he will heal. From first day since we came, We've seen crutches being thrown away. We've seen deaf and dumb being healed. We've seen those who are in their wheelchair, they got her. That is one kind of disease. There's still many other kinds. So don't say, I don't, I'm not on crutches. I'm not in a wheelchair. All manner of sickness, all manner of disease in your body, in your life, in your family, the Lord will heal tonight. <laughs> Blindness, it will take away. Dimness of sight, it will take away. Your ulcer, it will take away. That cancer will be healed. The pile will be operated by the Lord tonight. Brain problem, insanity, madness. He'll take that away tonight in Jesus' name. As we pray, as we call upon the Lord, and you come to the kingdom of power. Any sickness in your body after the prayer, you'll not be looking here and looking there and looking at crutches. Of course, crutches are going to be done away with. Wheelchair will be dropped here. All those who are lame and paralyzed, the Lord will heal. But your own, if you are not paralyzed, if you are not lame, if you are not blind, but you have another sickness, another disease that disturbs your peace and disturbs your life tonight at the final age. Amen. You have a testimony. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, and his fame went throughout all Syria. All Syria, from the north, from the west, from the east, from the south, from the villages, from the towns, from the cities, from the capital of Syria. All Syria. You see, the killing of the Lord is for everyone in our country here. If you have been brought from the north, healing has come to you today. You came from the west, you came from the east. Congratulations, you have your healing today. You're from the south. From your, you're from the riverside. You're from the capital. If I were there with you, I will come and shake your hand because you have healing here tonight. All Syria, all Cameroon, every nation, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse, different, diabolical diseases and torments. Yeah. 
and those that were possessed were devils and those that were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them all of them different kinds of sicknesses different kinds of diseases and he healed them all and Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise the Lord, you will give a testimony. I come to number three here. Number three, righteousness without retaliation in the kingdom of peace. You see, there are people that major on retaliation. They're full of anger. They're full of disappointment. They're full of human attitude and human action. They're full of Nebuchadnezzar inside them. They're full of Pharaoh inside them. They're full of Herod inside them. Like we believers are full of Christ inside us. They're full of angry Nebuchadnezzar inside them. Like we are full of the Holy Ghost. They are full of Judas Iscariot inside them. But then, as we come to Christ, and uh, the Nebuchadnezzar inside, full of retaliation, has been controlling us. And the Pharaoh on the inside has been controlling our thoughts, our attitude, our action. Now we come to Christ. There are people, uh -uh, how can you talk about my marriage? How can you talk about my family? And you're bold enough to say, I should not have taken the wife of Philip. I should be satisfied with my wife. One man, one wife. And you tell me it was wrong for me to take my brother's wife. Uh, Herod then had the mind to retaliate. And he, and he waited for the right time. Other times, it was nice, it was smiling, but that retaliation was still in the heart. You know the story. That wife that John the Baptist said, that wasn't right for you to take your brother's wife. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. If Philip had taken your wife, how would you have felt? You shouldn't do that. He was angry. Herodias was angry. And Herodias, that wife, was trying to find the time, the appropriate time. And so they threw him into the prison. And when the time of meat and drink, celebration and dancing came, and the daughter of Herodas danced, Herod said, ask whatever you want. What do you think here she wants? She has the same retaliatory spirit passed from the mother unto her. And she said, give me here the head of John the Baptist. Retaliation. Every woman, every man, every boy, every girl that has Herod in him will plan to retaliate. It's when we come to Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Righteousness, the King of Righteousness, 
and the king of Salem. That he gives us peace and he takes Herod away from our lives. Today, we come to the kingdom of peace. You come to the kingdom of peace. He'll take anger away from your heart. He'll take revenge away from your life. He'll take retaliation away from you. It will take the plan of harassing anybody out of your heart. He'll give you righteousness without retaliation. Look at that again in Romans chapter 14 verse 17. Romans chapter 14 verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not pee, is not meat and drink. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That kingdom of God is coming inside you today. He will forgive your sin. He will give you peace. He will give you righteousness. He will give you joy. He will give you healing. He will give you deliverance. Every property of Satan, it will take away from you. And it will take Pharaoh away from your heart. It will take Nebuchadnezzar away from your life. It will take Herod away. It will take the attitude of Judas Iscariot away from your life tonight. Heaven will enter your soul. Forgiveness will enter your soul. Freedom will enter your soul. And your body, the bone, the eyes, the brain, the blood, your flesh, from head to toe, it'll take sickness from you. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? <laughs> Something great is coming upon your life tonight. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord has come, first of all, to dig the root of sin. And the source of all our problem, he wants to take that sin away from you first. And he wants to give you forgiveness, give you freedom, give you salvation, give you peace of mind. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want this real salvation that sets you free from sin by his power, through his grace. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. God bless you there. I want that salvation. God bless you there. I want that total freedom from sin. God bless you there. I want relief from this perplexity of sin in my life. Raise up that hand there. As you are raising up the hand, you are stand up. You are coming for pardon. Where are you? Stand up. You are coming for the peace of God. You are coming so that the Lord will write your name in the book of life in heaven. You will do it now. Raise up your hand and stand up. So you can have this assurance of the joy and the peace of salvation. Get up, get up. As you are standing up and raising your hand, say, O oh Lord, I come. I want forgiveness. 
I want peace. I want your righteousness in my life. He'll do it. He never says no to the people that come for peace and salvation. Say, Lord, I repent of my sin. I turn away from my sin. I believe you that you will not reject me. Lord, I come. Thank you, Lord. As I believe, I know you have received me. And now I have forgiveness. I have the joy of salvation. I have the peace of salvation. I have the righteousness without retaliation. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know you are the God of gods and the Lord of lords. You're a merciful God, a gracious God. You're plenteous in mercy. We come to you now. And all these who have raised up their hands and they're standing up. Here, over the radio, over the television, online, everywhere. Take away the condemnation of their sin. Take away the guilt of their evil. Bring your salvation into their heart. Bring the joy of salvation into their heart. And the peace that comes with salvation, give unto everyone now in Jesus' name. Transformation of life. Recreation of their soul and spirit and heart. Give unto everyone now. And let the spirit of God be a witness in their hearts. They are saved. And let the change and transformation be evident to them and evident to their neighbors. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. That's the salvation. That's the righteousness. That's the peace. Welcome into the kingdom of peace. We're we'll calling our moderating overseer tonight to help us during this counseling time. And then I'll come back and you'll have healing from all manner of sickness, deliverance from all manner of diseases. Amen. Conseiller, s'il vous plaît, dépêchez-vous. Faites vite parce que ce soir, nos yeux vont voir de grandes choses. Feel well. The form, in a way that will be well, can be read. Let the addresses be correct. Don't forget to put your telephone number, your contact number. Let the indications be clear. For those who are following online, you will see a link that is below the screen. You click to. You click to that link and you have a formula. And then you are going to fill the form that will appear. That's to help you more and more. And the Lord will bless you.
All those who are following by radio and television, you equally see a number below your screen. You can send a number by SMS or WhatsApp. Plus two, three, four. 91. 54. 44. 92. 63. I take it over again for those who have fallen by radio and television. So you can go and join this number to receive counseling. By SMS or by WhatsApp. Plus 234. 91. 54. 44. 92. And 63. So announce equally that there will be the launch hour with Jesus. Tomorrow at 2.30 at the minister's conference hall. So have a special lunch hour with Jesus. You are cordially invited. Counselors are progressing. We equally have the converts rally. A special, a special banquet online for those who have given their life to Jesus. Sunday, 2nd April 2023. So give you more information on that. A pastor will be very happy to have you in this special banquet. For all those who have given their life to Jesus here in Douala, Sunday, 2nd April, 2023. So find yourself at the Headquarters Church, Deeper Life. At Holiness Chapel. Ancien Road, Bonaberry, Douala, 3 p.m. prompt. After the prayer from the man of God tonight, because I know you will have your testimony, watch that you testify before going back. All those who are following online, don't forget to send your testimony through the WhatsApp number that is below the screen. You can equally do a video clip of your testimony that you can send by WhatsApp or by Telegram. And the Lord shall bless you abundantly. 
Counselors, are you done at the right time? Are you done at the right on site? At the middle? Supervisors? Yeah, they're done over here, they're done over there. At the left hand side? Yes, behind there. You have been very dynamic. May the Lord bless you. Are you done? Behind the choir. Praise the Lord. You are still seated. Praise the Lord. The time has come. Praise the Lord. Gloire à Dieu. I said, Praise the Lord. Je dis gloire. Your healing has arrived. Your healing has arrived. If you are inside the house and you are expecting a great visitor, and then you hear the sound of the car. And your boy running. Papa, Mama, he has come. Who you are expecting? He has come. What do you do? Will you fold your hand and sit down there? You get up. You go out. You receive him. And now that's how you are going to receive your healing. The healing arrived for you. The deliverance arrived for you. When you hear the name of Jesus, that's the announcement, it is there. When you hear the final amen, that's the opening of the door for you to just stretch out your hand and it is done. Jubilation on my right hand side. Excitement on in my front there. There is a jumping up and a shouting by my left. Online everywhere, joy has come. Healing has come. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand on yourself knowing that this is your time of miracle. Father, in Jesus' name. What a great and mighty God you are. You are the giver, the originator of miracle. The giver of healing and deliverance. The solution to every problem of life. The healer. The helper. The lifter up. Lord, I pray. At this time, divine miracle touch will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. From the top of the to the tip of the toe. Let your miracle power come upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. Blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb receive the touch, the transformation of the Lord. Begin to hear, begin to speak in Jesus' name. Any swelling, any part of your body, I command that swelling come out in Jesus' name. Any pain in any part of your body, I command that pain come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
the pain of arthritis I speak to you right now be healed in Jesus name issue of blood in any light there dry up in Jesus name I pray for those who are paralyzed, those who have stroke. I pray that the hand of the Lord will touch you not stroke. Come out in Jesus' name. Those who are maimed, those who are paralyzed, I pray that the, the power of God will come upon your body now and you enjoy the healing, the deliverance of the kingdom of power. The demon of madness, I command those demons, come out in Jesus' name. Everywhere now, all manner of sickness, you are healed in Jesus' name. All manner of disease, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, everywhere, let there be joy of healing, the excitement of deliverance, and the jubilation of total redemption in the body, in the mind, in the soul, in the head, in the brain, everywhere in Jesus' name. Confirm the miracle for everyone. Confirm your power in everyone. After the final amen, testimonies everywhere. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, your miracle is already there. Is that all the clap?